When we work with element data, it is quite handy when we have a table that contains a lot of the fundamental properties of the various elements. And this is such a table. So in the first column, there are, of course, just the elements. Then in the following um, um, columns and categories, and I'm certainly not going through this in detail, there are then um, properties something like the 50% concession temperature at various temperatures, then information about whether the elements are refractory or little file or sidereal file and so on. So each, if there's a one, for example, then this particular element is in this case volatile, so this lithium is volatile, it's also lithophile, but it's not sidereal file. It's quite um, straightforward here. And then there are additional information, something like solar abundances, conversion factors for oxide into element, um, some um, information about the valence of these or also isotope information and all this kind of stuff. And then a quite straightforward program can be used to extract, for example, just a specific set of elements. For example, if you have chemical data of um, siderophile elements in a certain temperature interval and you want just, or we have chemical elements but want to plot them just for siderophile elements that condense in a certain temperature interval and we want to find these, then we can very quickly do this. So these three lines here are just to import the data I just showed you. So this is just importing this data and these data are then stored in this variable that's called data. I don't want to see the table because it just distracts. Um, I just want to extract something from the table. So I suppress the output of this table. And then I use the select command and then data Oh, first, I want to know what categories are in this database, which I can extract um, with this, this command here. Then these are all the, the first line of this data set, basically. And then I can use select from data. And for example, I want to select um, the T50% no, condensation temperature. And I want to only see elements that condense below 1200 Kelvin. So then I use this kind of command here and I execute it and I get a new table down here. And this table now only contains elements that condense at temperatures below 1200 Kelvin. So you can see in this third column, there are no um, temperatures above 1200 Kelvin. And then maybe I just want to get uh, the elements in a certain interval, so only between say 800 and 1200 Kelvin. So this is this is the category name, and this is the lower and the higher temperature. And then I execute again, and then so this is a smaller, of course. And these are now all the elements condensing in this interval. And now I said I also want to, uh, from this side, I only want the siderophile elements. So I can add here an, a new selection criteria. In this case, sidero file should be one because each time there's a one it means it's sidero file and I execute again. And now I only get the sidero file elements that condense in a certain temperature interval. And if I want to just plot these, I'm interested just in sidero file elements in a certain temperature interval for whatever reason, then I can do it this way. And as you can see it's quite straightforward. I just need one line of command here to find the the elements that I want and that um, justify the uh, certain certain select selection criteria, and this is why these kind of tables with all these properties are quite handy. You can use them to quickly extract some elements that we in particular are looking for.